stay where hey, well, let's sit back, yeah. it's okay. You got enough light? Yes, yep, oh, it's yes. fine. Okay, go ahead. All right, this is an interview at Hampton Inn, Elmsford, New York. It is the 29th of September, 2004, approximately 11.40 a.m. Interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? My name is Catello Charles Anacarico. I was born in Dubs Ferry, New York, in 1924. Okay. What was your educational background prior to entering service? Uh, I went to one year of uh, aviation school in Manhattan. During the Depression, we moved from Dobbs Ferry to Brooklyn. And I graduated in 1938. I graduated from elementary school, and I went to the Heron High School, Aviation High School, in uh, Manhattan. I then got out of school uh, at the age of 16, and I uh, I went to work. I went to work in a uh, factory. I later went, took another job. I went to work down on the New York Army base when the war started. And I was working at the Army base. I was a longshoreman, and uh, I was working loading ships, ammunition, and uh, tanks, and then I joined the Navy. Okay, so you enlisted. Do you remember where you were and uh, your reaction to Pearl Harbor, how you heard about it? Oh, yes, I was living at one, as 516 Clinton Street in Brooklyn, New York. And just prior to that, the first ship that was sunk, the Reuben James, was a ship that my brother-in-law was on. And when we had word that he was missing in action, we were worried about that. And it turns out that as the ship was going down, he was on a raft that went on to the ship. That's, then we heard about Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, why did you select the Navy? Because my brother-in-law was a Navy man. Mm -hmm. And he said, if I joined the Army, he would disown me. And I love my brother-in-law, Gordon Long, 32 years. God bless him, may he rest in peace. Mm -hmm. He was on every ship in the Navy. Hmm. Okay. Um, where did you go for your basic training? Samson, New York. And when did you go there? Uh, it was in January. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure at the date, but I have the date right here. Yeah. No, it doesn't give me the date. Well, it was in 1994. It was 1944. Mm -hmm. and I mean, 1943. Mm -hmm. I got out of boot camp in 1943. And from there, I have my records here. From there, I went to, uh, to, a, to the uh, Camp Bradford in Virginia. And from Camp Bradford in Virginia, I went to the uh, to Richmond. For, I went to the Richmond Mechanic School or Diesel School, and from there I went to uh, Camp Bradford in uh, in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. And from there I was transferred to the USS James O'Hara. The reason why? Well, what happened was at Camp Bradford I didn't get along too well with one of the officers. Seems that. During the obstacle course, there were two of us that were always win, would always win. There were two champs, this young fellow and I, this Bill Anderson and I. And this, up and I'll, I'll and this Lieutenant Briscoe, he was the commander of the Beach Battalion, and he wanted me to join the Beach Battalion, and I didn't want it. So I got put on KP for two months. So then I became a bad boy. Okay. I, I went AOL and I went to California. When I got to California, I was given a captain's mess and I said that I, I joined the fight, not to wash dishes. So they let me, they let me stay there and they put me on the, uh, the uh, APA 90, the O'Hara. And from there, that's when I got the experience. We went to Saipan. 
which was, well, first off, let me tell you, when we got to Pearl Harbor, I was on board an oil tanker, and when we got to Pearl Harbor, we were all on deck, and we had tears in our eyes to watch all these ships that were sunk, and all the, all, all the lives that were lost. It was very heartbreaking. I don't think there was a tear on board the ship. Well, anyway, from there I went to the ship, the USS O'Hare, the APA-90 O'Hara, and then we went to Saipan. Saipan, that was another rough deal to watch people. They were told by the Japanese that we were monsters, that we would degrade them, and that we would rape them and kill them. And, and if we degraded them, they wouldn't go to heaven. They wouldn't go to there. They wouldn't be the geisha girls for the for the for the samurai. And they were jumping off the off a three hundred foot mountain, men and women and kids in their arms. That was a terrible sight to see. Then I lost one of my best friends on Saipan. He was given a little boy a chocolate bar. And a boy's 13-year-old brother come out and hacked him three times with a saber. He, when, he, when we come back there, three days later he died. And if you think a funeral is sad, you have to witness a funeral at sea. It is one of the most depressing, saddest sights you want to see. And again, a lot of us... You know, we felt it. You, you're on a ship with a guy, and you know, it's it's like family. It's really like family. But when we went, but the best part was when we went through the canal, and we went through the canal. Before you go through the canal, they send you this letter. This letter tells you that. You are being charged for impersonating a shellback, which is uh, is worth for for a sailor who has got big time. And anyway, we had one day to do what we could to a shellback. Well, we had we had one lieutenant. <laughs> we used a really ribbon. So what did we do? We sneaked into his cabin, and we sprayed him with red paint. Three of us. Well, he come looking for me, and he says, "I know it's you, Peppy. I'm gonna." I was hiding up in a crow's nest. <laughs> well, when I finally come down, boy, did I get it! And they went, and then we had to go through the drysail sheet. When they hit you with a bat, they made you crawl through the tube. But the, the one that really got me was when you had to go through a long log like a piece of, uh, a thin piece of wood, I would say, and it was greasy. And you'd have to go across it, and, and it was a pool of muddy water with, with garbage in it, everything in it, you name it, was in there. <laughs> and I fell in twice. Funny, the heck with this. I crawled across, and I want to get there. That big, heavy chief, you had to kiss him on his greasy stomach. And, man, that was funny as heck, but it was was really something you, 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 you'll you never forget if you were in the service and you went through the equator. Then you became a shellback. Then from Saipan... Now what, what did you do on, on the O'Hara? Well, at first doing? I was in the, in the end room, then one of, the, one, of the, one, one of my friends, he was 28 years old and he had three kids, and they needed a volunteer for for a 20 millimeter gunner and they chose him so I took his place during general quarters I was on gun 16 it was a 20 millimeter gun and believe me when you're on a millimeter gun you see all the action and I mean you see all the action then we come back then we load it up for Luzon meantime while we're waiting in port we got hit with a camp Kazi. Two P-38s were chasing this Japanese plane, the Zero, and he'd come over the ship, so we were told, do not fire, do not fire, so they shot him down and he hit us. When he hit us, he lodged on our plane, and we had to throw this plane off. The pilot was welded in this cockpit. 
He couldn't have been no more than 12, 13 years old. But he was a Camp Kazi, the divine win. Mm -hmm. So we threw him overboard. Then we had to go, you know, we had to go to, to the, uh, the base to be repaired. And then from there we went to, from Saipan we went to Luzon. Luzon, same thing. Then from Luzon we went to I-80. And while we were there, that's when General got to come back. And we were unloading our troops. See, we unloaded our troops. And believe me, it was rough. And from Saipan, we went to uh, Anawitok. Oh, Anawitok. That was uh, 10 miles, a 10 miles stretch of sand that was an airport. That's all it was. And 103 degrees. And we had to stay there. We, we unloaded our troops there. That was, I think it was the 7th Marines. And then we went to Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima was rough. It was very rough was very, very rough. But we were lucky. On the way to Iwo Jima, and you know, a lot of sailors used to call the Coast Guard, uh, they had a name for, uh, I forgot the name they called the Coast Guard, uh, CB Sail or something like that. But let me tell you, the Coast Guard were fighting men. We had 33 on our, on our starboard side, and we had 35 on our port side. Both Coast Guard ships and both got hit. 33 lost about 30, 40 men. 35 got hit with about 15 men. And that's why I always respected the Coast Guard. My two sons, in fact, I, I told them they should join the Coast Guard because that is a fighting outfit. But after that, well, comical things happen. Like one time I was painting up a deck. I was painting up a deck in the engine room, and one of the chiefs I didn't like. He was always on my, always on my tail. So what I do? I spill a can of white paint on him. <laughs> oh, he went a here on report. I come down. I said, Oh, I said, I'm still. Oh, I'm, I'm so the heat. You know, I'm sweating like a dog. So the lieutenant comes down. He says, What are you doing with that man? He says. Look at him, look at him. So, oh, 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 oh. he sent me to Sig Bay. <laughs> and he told the chief, you're not going to report that man. No way. <laughs> and from there, we went back when, then right after, after Jap Japan surrendered, we went to San Francisco. And we were treated well, very well. And then I got transferred to the DD-889 the O'Hara, the O'Hare, yeah, the, the O'Hare, and there was another story, it, well, it was pretty nice, it was very good service, and then I, I made my points and I got released, but other than that, my experience was something I'll never forget, and I'll tell you one thing, I was proud to go, I was proud to serve my country, it's not like today, today, it, Hey, I used to work down at Piers. If you ever come over to me when I was working down at Piers and said to me, Hey, fella, is that ship going out? You'd get the beating of your life. Because I would report you to my boss, to my dock boss, and four or five guys would come out. And before you, before you, like, the FBI come down, bag the guy, take him away. Because that's the way it was in them days. Everything you, you, you had to... Hey, when I worked on us down at Piers, we were loading ships. They what they call these big, big ships. They used to, they used to call them sea trains, mm -hmm. and we were loading them with ammunition, with tanks, and and you don't you don't ask questions. Mm -hmm. That was in Brooklyn, and in Brooklyn, let me tell you, when it comes down to the in Brooklyn, the pier workers down in Brooklyn, they were the best. Well, the pier workers all over New York, they were the best one to come to security. I mean, if you, I, I read, read, you never ask any questions. You never say, hey, are you working on that ship? What's on it? Oh, to make the story short, but that's, that's the way it was. No. Anything else you want to know? Um, no, I guess uh, with your war experiences, uh, that's it. Um, what uh, 
did you ever make use of the GI Bill after you? Uh, yes, I, I did. I went to I went to I went to a school for uh, you know architectural work, but then they canceled it. Mm -hmm. Then I I went for dancing, <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, I became a heck of a good dancer. <laughs> now, did the government pay for that? Yes, yes, they paid for it. Uh huh. Yeah, but then after that, I just. Went back to work. I went back to work down at Piers. Did you ever use the 5220 Club? I beg your pardon? 5220 Club. It was $20 a week for 52 weeks after you Oh, yes, service. yes, yes, I had that. Mm -hmm. That came in very handy because I didn't get a job right away. You know, it's uh, it was a little rough in the beginning, you know. It was, right. But then when I got a job, I got off it. Mm -hmm. it's, Did you uh, join any veterans organizations? Oh, yeah. I belong to Veterans of the Farm War. I belong to the Veterans of the Farm War. Did you ever uh, stay in contact with anyone that was in service with you? Yes, a couple of my friends, but most of them, most of them are gone now. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of my friends still alive that you know. But uh, I wrote a letter recently. Uh, well, not recently, about a year ago, that uh, for a uh, reunion. But I never got an answer. Mm -hmm. And now the reunions are always far away. The reunion I wrote that was in California. And uh, I, uh, I wasn't, I didn't have enough money to go, let's put it that way. I, I was a working man. Mm -hmm. But I did write letters and I was correspond with a couple of my friends. But then, uh, life takes a toll on you. Yeah, yeah. Well, could you tell us about some of these photographs that you brought now? This is when I, when I got out of boot camp. That's what I looked like at 18 when I got out of boot camp. Well, you were a pretty good looking fellow back then. <laughs> I had hair then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any, uh, you got some other photos uh, here. This too. is the one where it was a Camp Rapid and it was, what a grueling, it was a, uh, hold on a minute, it was a, uh, they call it, a physical fitness deal, but to us it was a torture. And this gentleman, I, this gentleman, that's me, and this gentleman was Bill Anderson. And we used to win every week. Got to the point where they, they finally said, hey. So I said to the captain, I said, look, sir, I says, we'll win. I says, but we'll donate the money to charity or something. <laughs> so he, they agree with that because we were two of the, we were two of the best on the obstacle course. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is when I was in Hawaii. This picture of me in Hawaii. Okay. This is a picture of me on board the USS O'Hare, the DD-889. All righty. This is me on leave when I went home. This was in East Irvington, New York. I took this picture because that's where I used to live. Okay. Okay. This is me and my friend Sal. This little guy, this little idiot, he, he had forged papers and he signed up 13 years old. Uh, and what do I meet him on my base in Camp Baffert? I said, what are you doing here? He says, oh. he says um, I, I got papers saying I was 18. I went to my commander and said, he's only 13. So they sent them home. This is me in, in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Same thing, Richmond, Virginia. And that's about it. Well, you had these that you sent us. Now that's. Uh... Oh, this is the. Uh, this is the. Uh, this is a naval training station that I went to. It's a diesel school. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and uh, where is he? I'm looking for me. Oh, here I am. Okay. Where, That's me right there, the little guy. We're about? Right up in the corner. Oh, okay. Yep. Like this. Right here. Right yep, we got him. Oh. Uh, All right. If you notice something about me, I always wore my cap 
See, most of the guys, most of the guys would wear their, their hats straight, mm -hmm. but not me. Well, well, here's one you sent us. Yeah, that, well, that, that's the blacks. Mm -hmm. That's the black blues. But, but here, see, I always had my hat with the wings on it, and it was always cocked over my, until this day, I wear my hat cocked over my eyes, and my wife tells me, what do you wear it that way for? <laughs> but that's, that was a salty way. See the way it was cocked? Mm -hmm. yeah. over your, and and your, uh, your your hat had to be two inches above your eyebrows. Two fingers above your eyebrows. Or else <laughs> you get gigged. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.